it's no more what the state is now recommending people do and what it means for your day. Small business impact, how some are getting creative to keep their shops clean and survive the coronavirus setback. All states, including Ohio, will see some sort of reopening before Memorial Day. But is that too soon? And are healthcare workers preparing to see numbers rise again? A medical expert joins us live to weigh in. Honoring Annie Glenn, advocate and widow of John Glenn, died from COVID-19 complications. We talked to people who knew her well. Virtual Memorial Day. We have games you can play with family and friends even if you can't be in the same space. Plus, have you heard of the Patience Challenge? Wait for it. Hang in there, kid. Don't blow this. It's taking over social media, so our Mike Polk tests some of our co-workers' kids. Do they pass the test? What's new starts right now. And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. And Romney, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see the Patience Challenge. Oh, I'm ready. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of What's New. So good to see you again. Hope you're having a terrific Tuesday afternoon. I'm Jay Crawford. Romney Smith is in again for Betsy. Romney, great to see you. We have a very busy show, so let's get right to it. We absolutely do. Good to see you, too, again, Jay. So today, Governor Mike DeWine announced that we're moving from a stay-at-home order to an urgent health advisory. He's calling it Ohioans protecting Ohioans. And this is just another step forward as we continue battling the virus and reopening our economy. Our Laura Queso is here with a breakdown of what all this means for us. Good afternoon, Laura. Yeah, hi, Romney. Again, more new information coming in from the governor just a couple of hours ago. This urgent health advisory incorporates many of the points from the order, but this is now a recommendation. That is the key word here. So this includes social distancing, a limit of 10 people for mass gatherings, frequent hand washing and other sanitation efforts. It also incorporates all the business orders about social distancing, wearing masks and really doing everything possible to protect the customer and the public. The governor says we have moved from an order to a recommendation because Ohioans have done a great job in slowing the spread. His words, as of now, he said, we know that one person who has coronavirus infects one other person before one person infected two people on average. So this just goes to show we are moving in the right direction. But keep in mind, more than half of COVID-19 cases in Ohio are ages 30 to 59. This new phase that we're now in is about learning to live with the virus. It is with us. It will remain with us for a while. And we must do all we can to contain it and keep it from killing our fellow citizens. What this comes down to now is that each of us has responsibility to each other to slow the spread. He said keeping the virus spread down and growing the economy really go hand in hand. And what about travel? Well, the governor announced today travel restrictions are lifted in Ohio. Unnecessary travel, though, outside of the state is permitted, but the governor said it's not really encouraged. The governor clarified that people still cannot have large parties or gatherings of more than 10 people as we approach this big holiday weekend, Romney. That's a good reminder. Thank you, Laura. Today, the governor also said we had 498 new cases reported in the past 24 hours, so a bit lower than yesterday. But he did point out that we had a spike in deaths. The state's 21-day average is 44 deaths a day. We had 63 new deaths reported in the past 24 hours, bringing the total deaths in the state to 1,720. Well, now on to your feed at five. The best researchers in the world are frantically working to try to develop a coronavirus vaccine. The White House says there could be a virus vaccine by the end of the year. But is that a realistic timetable? NBC News chief medical correspondent Dr. John Torres joins us live now to talk about that. Dr. Torres, very good afternoon to you. Developing a vaccine usually takes years. We know that. And I know these efforts have been fast tracked. What is a realistic timetable, doctor, for a vaccine for COVID-19? 
And Jay, you're right. On the average, vaccines take about 11 years to get through all the different phases of testing and out to production and into somebody's arm. The fastest one has been four years. That was the Ebola vaccine that they recently developed. This one they're trying to get in 12 to 18 months, which would be a record for a vaccine. And that's what most experts are still looking at. They're saying about 12 to 18 months. They started talking about that back in February. So we're probably talking early 2021. I know everybody wants it now. And the president is saying maybe by the end of the year, if everything happens perfectly, Perfectly. All the all the ducks line up, all the cards are in place, everything works perfectly, possibly by the end of the year, but realistically more likely early 2021, which is still completely fast for this, for any va- vaccine. But of course, it's something we want sooner rather than later. So we'll keep our fingers crossed, Jay. Certainly, doctor. The importance of this is, uh, is, is paramount for sure. Uh, late this afternoon, doctor, our governor lifted Ohio Stay Safe order in Ohio, making many of the restrictions now voluntary. Is there anything that we need to keep in mind as we sort of come out of quarantine and into the world again? The thing you need to keep in mind is coronavirus is still out there. It's just not out there as much as it was before. And so uh, people are looking at it saying, okay, we need to get on with our lives. Let's go ahead and go out there. But every time you do, it's gonna be a little bit more risk. And you wanna keep that risk relatively low, as low as possible. So that means doing the things that we know work. That's social distancing, wearing masks, particularly if you can't social distance. Keep washing your hands. Don't touch your face. Those things are paramount and important, even though we're starting to open things up a little bit. And what you'll notice is depending what you go to, that social distancing should be put in place. There are probably more hand sanitizers out than you've ever seen before in your life. These are important steps Mm -hmm. to take. At the same time, listen to the news, listen to the public health authorities, because if cases start going up, they might start clamping things down again, Jay. Quickly, doctor, because we only have about 15 seconds in general as a country. Are you pleased with the rate in which we're moving here or are we going too fast in your view? I think that we're moving appropriately. We just make sure we don't move faster than we're doing right now is probably the main lesson we need to take from this. All right. Very good. That's a great takeaway. Dr. John Torres of NBC News. Doctor, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. 3 News has taken you inside restaurants, bars, and salons trying to get back to normal. And tonight, our Rachel Polanski is showing you the creative way that one Chagrin Falls clothing shop is reopening while also following the state's guidelines. While most stores have turned on their lights, there aren't many shoppers. But small business owners are trying to change that by stepping up their sanitizing efforts. At Blush Boutique in Chagrin Falls, hand wipes greet you at the door, and there is touchless checkout. But owner Lori Klopper has gone a step further, steaming clothing after customers try on. After people try on things, if they don't uh, purchase it, I've been steaming all of the clothing. It's definitely a lot more, more work. I tend to have kind of a pile back there near my steamer. According to the CDC, flu viruses are killed by heat above 167 degrees. And steam, which is produced at 212 degrees, is known to kill the flu virus. Lori says it may be more work, but it's worth it. You know, I'm doing those extra steps just to get people in here and into the stores down here in uh, Chagrin Falls. As you probably remember, stores considered non-essential were closed in March under Governor DeWine's orders. Now most of them are reopened and they're just waiting for customers to return. Rachel Plansky, 3 News. Ohio has lost a woman who was a legend in her own right and the wife of one of our state's most famous citizens. Annie Glint passed away at age 100 from complications of COVID-19. She was married for 73 years to the first American to orbit Earth. And Annie Glenn earned her own hero status as an advocate for people with disabilities and her devotion to family in the public spotlight. John always said she was the bravest person he ever met. But what most people don't know is that she was a pretty accomplished person in, in her own right. She was a gifted musician. Uh, She turned down a scholarship to the famous Juilliard School of Music in New York City to marry John uh, right around the time World World War II broke out. Those of us who knew and loved them both could not possibly think of one without thinking of the other. They were always together. And that's where they are today, where they always wanted to be, which is together for all time. A virtual memorial service for Annie is being planned for June through the John Glenn Institute at Ohio State University. And she'll be buried later with her husband, John, at Arlington National Cemetery. 
All right, switching gears right now. Our Russ Mitchell joins me now with a look at some of the top headlines today. Hey, Russ. Hey, Romney. Got some breaking news to tell you about this afternoon. A federal judge just ordered the Bureau of Prisons to speed up the release of 837 medically vulnerable prisons in Elkton Prison through home confinement and compassionate release. This came from an ACLU of Ohio lawsuit. The original order was issued on April 13th. All of our rain the past few days caused some flooding, as we know, and this is Port Clinton. The police department posted these photos showing the downtown area. It also issued a warning to stay off those flooded roads because most were impassable. Tensions running high after President Trump threatened today to permanently pull U.S. funding from the World Health Organization if the agency does not make what he called big improvements. At the same time, some European leaders announced support for the organization. And for a limited time, you can cruise the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo in your car. Cruise the Zoo opens tomorrow through May 31st from 10 in the morning until 4 p.m. The cost is 20 bucks a car for zoo members, 40 for non-members. You do need to make a reservation and pay online. And Romney, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Russ, just with the mention of that story, I'm sure there are parents literally logging on right now to make <laughs> sure their kids have something to do tomorrow. Thank par you. Parents probably want to go as well. Looks Absolutely. like fun. Still ahead, virtual fun. Ways to still have fun with friends and family on Memorial Day, even if you can't physically be together. And Stephanie, what's clicking in Cleveland? Rami, it turns out LeBron James was actually pretty close to becoming a pro football player after all. We have the story behind that. And Matt Wentz, welcome back. How's our weather looking today? Hi there, Steph. Happy Tuesday to you. We had a big difference across the viewing area today. We had sunshine in the east, rain still hanging on down to the south. When does all the rain leave our area? We've had too much. We'll detail that coming up in your forecast. Check one, two, three, Brandon's microphone. This is what it sounds like. Welcome back to What's New. It is Tech Tuesday. 
or Trivia Tuesday, depending on how you want to look at it. The weekend is coming. It's Memorial Day weekend. It's less than a week away now, and this will be unlike any other Memorial Day weekend that we've seen in our lifetime, certainly. You might be skipping your annual barbecue filled with family and friends and, of course, all the games that go along with it, but that does not mean that you can't still have some fun with your favorite people. Our tech guru, Brandon Simmons, found virtual ways to have fun with friends and family. We've all been finding ways to use technology to our advantage the past couple months, and with Memorial Day right around the corner, we'll need to use it again, many of us opting for virtual gatherings. We are missing that social interaction, that's that connection, that engagement, and we don't have to give it up. We just kind of have to pivot. Lifestyle expert Barbara Majeski is going to help us do just that with some game options, starting with an old favorite, Pictionary, but on Zoom. I think that's just a classic game that all ages can enjoy and you get a lot of laughs. Uh, book, uh, waterfall, uh, swing. <laughs> you can play by actually drawing images and holding them up or by using Zoom's built-in whiteboard feature. So you'll find that whiteboard feature right at the bottom of Zoom under that share screen feature. Hit share screen and simply go over to whiteboard and it'll let you pretty much type uh, whatever you want. And it's just a great way to engage with other families. Next up. Everybody go find a crayon. I love a good scavenger hunt. I mean, who doesn't? That's another game you can play with family members of all ages. It's a, it's a great way to also get people moving and, um, I don't know, also setting up incentives for rewards. Those are some old favorites, but you'll also want to head to jackboxgames.com for some new favorites. Drawful is a popular one you'll find. Each one of your devices, you will get a word and you have to draw it and then it propagates on your screen and people have to guess the name of it. And when I tell you this is so fun and funny and good for everybody. Instead of Zoom, these games are available on a number of different platforms, but they do cost money. It's best if you buy the party pack. Finally, if you're not having fun yet, look to ZoomJam.org where games are created and curated by real people instead of companies. As you can see, there are plenty of ways to stay in touch with one another while we stay apart. All right, Jay, so obviously we have to stay apart here uh, because we're working from home, right? But we're going right. to play a little Pictionary now. Are you, you ready? Yes, I've actually done this Zoom Pictionary, and it is a blast. That's awesome. I, I started drawing now. Trust me, I'm not cheating here, but I want you to uh, – we got a three-parter <laughs> here, okay? So I'm going to draw you three pictures okay. here. That's three the first parter. one. Can you see what that is? Okay, um, geez, my monitor is really small. Is it, is it an eyeball? Is it an eye? Uh, okay, well, let's, go with, let's just go with eye. All right, I like that. Okay. I like that. Three parts here. It looks like here. an eye. So that's part one down, Pat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got that one, man. You're the man. I trust you on this, man. I really need you to, to have my back on this one. How about this one? Here we go. <laughs> uh, that is, a, uh, that is a heart. A heart with an arrow. Yeah, that's right. uh, love. Love. I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, here's our last one. We're going to make this really good here. Here we go, here we go. I'm going to draw a couple different <laughs> things for you. A couple different things coming coming your way. We, I, well, I did the, I'm we no did this artist, with our, man. Uh, so, uh, my son and daughter on Easter, and it was a blast. We had fun. Oh, I'm sure you guys had a ton of fun. So bring it back out for Memorial Day. I want you to play host. All right, here's our last one. What are those? No doubt. You love sports. Man, I love sports and you love sports too. We all know it. We miss them. But in the meantime, we're going to be playing our virtual games. That's all we have left, Jay. All right. Very good. I'm glad I didn't let you down. You trusted me and I came through. Brandon Simmons, thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right. Um, I am very excited right now because from one game to another, this is like uh, the game portion of today's What's New. Matt Wentz is back from a little four-day break. Matt, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm, I'm excited, A, because you're back. I've missed you. But also because I get to take another shot at solving your word puzzle. And, Matt, I can't tell you how psyched I am because I feel today is the day. I'm close. Uh, Jay, you've been so close the last couple days. I have a feeling that more viewers uh, know it than we think right now. But, uh, yeah, you've been solving this for about a week and a half. Uh, I think today's the day as well. We're playing guess a letter. And we'll do a phrase, and, you know, we'll see what ends up with that. Uh, and, Jay, I know you're also excited about the weather. How, did you get outside this weekend and enjoy all the rain? Man, I, well, listen, I missed it. Saturday was great. No rain at all. And Sunday, here in Chagrin Falls, there was just a little bit of sprinkles here and there, but it was beautiful. Spent the whole day outside. 
Well, that's amazing, Jay, because you're the only one that stayed dry this weekend, <laughs> so that's great. I'll tell you, there's still some places seeing rainfall here right now. We've had way too much of it over the last couple of days. In fact, the month of May, uh, we are already about two to three inches, depending on where you are in the viewing area, over our month of May total. So we've had enough rain for the month, and we're still getting it. We'll show you the radar right now. Those showers continuing down to the south and the west. Meanwhile, we've had sunshine up in the northeastern half of the viewing area, but we have rain for us in the Willard area, heading over towards Norwalk. That extends down through Mansfield, Ashland, even down towards Holmes County and Millersburg, seeing just light showers. That's the key. So our flooding, it's not getting any worse, but it's not getting any better because the showers continue. We've got aerial flood warnings out for the Mansfield area uh, in terms of an area. They have many uh, road closures down there uh, that are seeing that flooding. And then the Black and Huron rivers are at flood stage or above, and that will continue to be an issue through tonight. The Northeast wind, if that wasn't enough, continues to pile up record high levels of lake water out towards the uh, western basin of Lake Erie. And you saw earlier the Port Clinton pictures, more of that here over the course of the next couple hours. But the bigger picture shows this swirling area of low pressure. I told you this thing was going to stick around like an unwelcomed house guest, and it continues to swirl across areas of Kentucky. The jet stream, which pushes these systems west to east, is buckled way off towards the north, so this system has nowhere to go, and it's going to continue to spin thankfully out of our, our way as we go over the next 24 hours. Temperatures, look how tricky they are. We're in the low 60s where we have the clouds and rain. Mid 70s out towards Ashtabula County where we've had a little bit of sun. And you've noticed that change in air mass. It was humid over the last few days, but we have some bone dry air coming in from the east. Dew points in the 30s. If you notice your nose is a little bit drier than it has been, it's because we have virtually no moisture in the atmosphere as this dry air continues to blow in. And that's what's eating away at our rainfall. Thankfully, National Design Mart Hour by our forecast. We all should clear out tonight. We're back in the upper 40s to near 50, so a cool night, a nice breeze out of the east. And then as we go on into your Wednesday, I think we all get a dry day as that system slips down to the south. We'll still have some clouds around mixed with sunshine, but a beautiful day with a refreshing breeze out of the east. Most of us will top out in the 60s. But then Thursday, wouldn't you know, that wobbly area of low pressure comes back with some more showers. Doesn't look like anything heavy at this point. Point, but it is going to bring rain, unfortunately, back to our forecast. As you see here in Universal Windows Direct, seven-day or seven-day forecast. You can see the scattered showers both Thursday and Friday. But then Saturday we start to turn a corner. We're going to warm up on into the weekend, Jay, up into the 80s, and it becomes more of a summertime pattern thereafter with afternoon showers and thunderstorms. So some good news in the forecast. All right, Jay, you get another crack at it. Let's see what we can get here. Go ahead and guess the letter right. in our puzzle here. G give me an F. Matt, give me an F. Oh, well, you got forecasts. That one was easy, right? Yeah, that All was right. easy. Ding. Now, Ding. I, know the, I know the puzzle. It's been killing me because I figured this out on your first day off. Um, do you want me yeah. to say it or would yeah. you like to say it? No, I want you to go ahead and solve that puzzle, Jay. All right, I will solve that puzzle. Before I do, um, I hear Emily and, and or Emmy and River in the background. Um, they'll love this news. Forecast calls for <laughs> kid number three by August. Yeah! That's it, Jay. You got it. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, oh you get that, it. All right, awesome. A huge congratulations yep. to the Wintz family. Please tell me that they're all in. right nearby. <laughs> yeah, they're all right nearby now. So we said, you know, there's not enough chaos in this household to uh, have two kids. So why not have a third one? So aren't you excited? Well, you get the babysit uh, even more. I couldn't be more excited. And I know our audience uh, shares yeah. in that enthusiasm. Here comes River and, em and Emmy, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations to the both of you. We are thrilled. And Matt, I think that's probably one of the most creative ways I've seen for anyone to announce a new addition to their family. Leave it to you. Genius, Matt. Congratulations. The good solving, Jay. Thank you very much. Very, very cool. Congratulations to the wins. We're coming right back. Clicking in Cleveland is on deck.
Welcome back. It's that time once again to see what's clicking in Cleveland with our digital anchor, Stephanie Haney. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Romney. Well, first off, congratulations to Matt yes. Wentz. His good news on baby number three has a very optimistic mindset right now. Yes, as we, we were all our first screaming story. in the newsroom. Very <laughs> exciting. Yes, so the optimism hopefully blends over into the NFL season because the Cleveland Browns preseason schedule is out and you can get tickets. They're for sale right now. So here's how that schedule's looking right now. First up, we're going to be playing the Chicago Bears away, then the Green Bay Packers also away before bringing it back home on August 30th against the Minnesota Vikings and then September 3rd home again against the Tampa Bay Buccaneer. So maybe we'll get our first taste of what Tom Brady is like in that new uniform for the Bucks. Now, the NFL does have a baseline refund policy in place in case games get canceled. So if you're hesitant about buying the tickets, you can check that out on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Okay, next up. Apparently, LeBron James was a lot closer to being a pro football player than a lot of us thought, except for maybe Doc Rivers. If you remember, the LA Clippers head coach said last week that he thought LeBron James would have been the greatest NFL player ever. Well, looks like he was on to something because apparently James was offered a contract from the Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones during the 2011 NBA lockout. He even started training for it to potentially get a shot, but then the lockout ended in December, so he didn't actually end up doing that. But uh, pretty surprising there, and apparently that contract offer is still framed in his office. Now, this last one is kind of a bummer, but the city of Canton has officially canceled its fireworks display for July 4th. They say that they made this call out of health concerns and also that it's in line with public health concerns over events drawing large crowds. Akron has also called off its main display this year. And of course, there are lots of bigger issues, but this hits really close to home, literally for me being from Canton. Here's a photo I took of Winston the Puggle watching those Canton City fireworks back in 2017 when I was staying with my parents. And I'm sure many people are used to having these great memories and doing that together, but there is some good news here. The city of Ashland is still having its fireworks and the city of Akron will have smaller displays throughout the area. So hopefully the people of Canton can hop in the car and they can see something nearby from a safe physical distance around me. That's of course the wish for everyone. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Still ahead on what's new, President Trump says he took a malaria drug to prevent him from getting COVID-19. We speak with a local doctor about the potential risks and whether it even works or not. And Legally Blonde fans rejoice, a third movie is in the works, which stars are on board in your pop break.
And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. Welcome back to What's New. I'm Jay Crawford, Romney Smith in for Betsy. Romney, I am so excited about the Matt Wentz news. That is so cool. I know. River and Emmy are going to have another sibling. Isn't that a great way to sort of make the announcement? Jay, little... you couldn't hear me, but I was screaming in the newsroom because it was so creative. <laughs> you got it. And clearly River was happy because he got in on the shot, too. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, you know the drill by now. We start the bottom of the hour each day with a little something we call Tell Me Something Good. And I think you've got something good for us today. I mean, I can't top wins, but I'm going to try with this next cute story. <laughs> so we have a good one today. We all know that we're supposed to be staying six feet apart for health and safety reasons, right? Well, one company came up with a creative way to do that while still socializing. Revolution Event Design and Production in Maryland created bumper tables. People stand inside of them and they can walk around, drink, dance, whatever they want to do at a safe distance from others. They're on wheels, which makes it easier to move around. Companies can actually buy or rent the tables and even have their logos added. So Jay, that's a pretty creative way to socially distance. I would try it, would you? I, and it looks like it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. I would try it. And I think we could have used some of those in a couple of establishments in Cleveland over the weekend. Yes. That might have helped with, you know, keeping everybody from congregating into that swarm mm -hmm. that we saw a little too often. All right, Romney, thank you very much. It's time now for our top talker at 530. A big announcement from Governor DeWine today, turning his orders into what he calls strong recommendations now. This new plan is called Ohioans Protecting Ohioans. Ohioans can now travel out of state. They no longer have to self-quarantine when they get back to Ohio. Staying home is still recommended, especially for those at risk, but no longer mandated. And businesses must still follow social distancing guidelines. Here's Lieutenant Governor John Husted on why they made these changes. No order and no law will be as successful as a well-informed public who simply cares and respects each other. And as we stand here today, that's our collective mission for all of us in Ohio as we move forward. The new plan still incorporates six feet of social distancing, a limit of 10 people for gatherings. And remember, frequent hand washing still in play. Romney? Up and getting a lot of discussion is something President Donald Trump announced yesterday. He said he's taking the anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine. The president also says he's tested multiple times for COVID-19 every few days, and he's been negative. Our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins, has more on what you need to know about that drug. President Donald Trump has long touted the malaria drug hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for coronavirus, and now he admits to taking it. The FDA cautioned against taking the drug outside of hospital treatment specific to COVID or in a clinical trial because it has been linked to heart problems. For anybody to take it at this point, uh, they're doing it without evidence. And there's a potential risk of harm particularly if it's combined with other medications that can affect the heart rhythm. So I'm assuming that the president is doing it under medical supervision where he can be monitored. And if it's done correctly without other medications and the heart rhythm is checked by just by simple EKG, then the risk is pretty low. The Ohio Medical Board will not allow doctors to prescribe the drug for anything other than COVID treatment or what it's approved for, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and malaria. At 73, the president is in a higher risk group for coronavirus, and he takes a statin to lower cholesterol. He's taking the drug as a preventative, but there's no clear indication it has any effect for that. It is, though, in several clinical trials currently being studied. Monica Robbins, 3 News. Russ Mitchell is back now with even more news headlines for us. Hey, Russ. Hey, Romney. Cleveland Clinic's Akron General Hospital will open a coronavirus testing location in mid-June in the downtown area. That testing site will be on South Broadway Street. According to Summit County Public Health, 36% of those infected in the county are African American, and this site will give better access for testing. The Treasury Department is going to start issuing some stimulus payments on a debit card. Until now, payments had either been direct deposited or sent as a paper check. About 4 million payments will be sent on those Visa debit cards through the mail, which can be activated immediately. 
And the chain Pier 1 today asked a bankruptcy court to allow it to close its stores for good as soon as reasonably possible once they're able to reopen from the pandemic. For now, the company is still serving customers through its website. So they'll reopen after the pandemic, then they'll close for good. Wow, Romney been around for 58 years at company. Wow, so another amazing sad... the impact COVID-19 is having on every sector of our lives. Exactly. All right, thanks, Russ. Okie dokie, there it is, the music, you know it, a royal anniversary, and Legally Blonde 3 is coming soon. Those stories and more with Steph Haney in today's Pop Break. Ryan Seacrest is back on the air after taking only a day off to recover from exhaustion after people were worried that he had had a stroke on the air during the American Idol finale on Sunday. Playing Aretha Franklin on the National Geographic series Genius Aretha premiering this fall. But according to his rep, his slurred speech and drooping eye were due to a lack of work-home balance. On Live with Kelly and Ryan today, Ryan thanked co-host Kelly Ripa's husband, Mark Consuelos, for filling in for him on Monday and thanked fans for their very kind well wishes, saying he got a day off to relax and now he's back at it. Welcome back, Ryan. Two years ago today, billions of people around the world tuned in to watch Meghan Markle and Prince Harry tie the knot. And a lot has happened in those two years. From welcoming their baby boy to stepping back from their duties as senior royals and moving to the U.S., where the Duke and Duchess have settled down in L.A. and are celebrating there with one-year-old Archie. Happy second anniversary to the happy couple. And we've got great news for all of us Elle Woods fans. We did it! Legally Blonde 3 is finally in the works. Not only will Reese Witherspoon return to her legendary role, but this time she's producing. Reese tweeted that some things are just meant to be, and this is 100% Elle Woods approved while sharing that she's teaming up with Dan Gore, who is writing the script, and Mindy Kaling to make this happen. Mindy shared the same screenshot of a Deadline article announcing the movie, writing that she's so excited to reunite with Reese to work on this project, and that Elle Woods is iconic, proving you can be girly and smart at the same time. Bend and snap, people. This has been a long time coming because Reese first signed on to Legally Blonde 3 back in 2018. And I think I speak for all blonde lawyers out there when I say it is about time. And Jay, if you haven't seen Legally Blonde 2, I want you to watch it. I want you to pay close attention to the end when she <laughs> drives by the White House and she winks because I'm calling it now. It's going to be Legally Blonde 3 vote for Elle. She is absolutely <laughs> running for president. <laughs> All right, I'll put that on my homework list. Watch Legally Blonde 2 <laughs> and pay close attention <laughs> for the wink at the end. All right, yes. Stephanie, thank you very much. Good job as always. We'll see you tomorrow. All week long, we are checking in with celebs with Cleveland Roots to see how they're holding up during the stay-at-home orders. I spoke with 3 News correspondent Emily Mayfield about what she and Baker are doing to stay busy these days. So is there something that you've learned about Baker that you didn't already know? It's not that I didn't know it before, but like it's really been accentuated. He cannot sit still. <laughs> it's like he <laughs> constantly has to be doing something. He needs to be entertained or doing something or moving around. That sounds very <laughs> familiar. <laughs> yeah, I happen to know someone like that. Um, we talked about a lot of things, how they've been spending the past couple of weeks, how Baker's working on his football stuff, and much more. And you can watch the full interview tonight on What's Next at 11 o'clock with Russ Mitchell and Laura Queso. Ahead on What's New. But don't touch them. You can't touch them until I get back, okay? Okay. You have to be so patient. Okay? So very patient. <laughs> How cute. Celebs like Thomas Rhett and his wife Lauren are testing their kids' patience by placing a bowl of candy in front of them and telling them they can't eat it until they come back into the room. Our Mike Polk is testing some three news employees' kids, and I can't wait for that. And Matt, it's been a big day for the Wintz family. How's the weather looking? Well, hi there, Jay. A big day for sure. We've got a big day for some of our southwestern counties that have seen all that rainfall over the last 48 hours. You're going to finally clear out tomorrow. At least most of us will. I've got your detailed forecast, including a weekend warm up coming up.
Welcome back to What's New. Maybe you've seen it online. It's everywhere these days. The patient Patience Challenge. It's taking over social media. Basically, here's how it works. Parents test their kids' patience by filling a bowl full of candy. They put it in front of them, and then they give them strict instructions. Don't touch this until I come back in the room. Well, they don't know that the camera's rolling and the parents can see every move they make. Here's how country star Thomas Rhett's daughter, Ada James, did with the Patience Challenge. <laughs> That's absolutely adorable. So we decided that we were going to put some of our co-workers' children to the test. Mike Polk gave it a try. Here's how it turned out. Patience. Wait for it. Hang in there, kid. Don't blow this. And lift off. Well, I suppose we all knew this was coming, folks. When you've been quarantining as long as we have, eventually we were going to start running out of ways to amuse ourselves. We've already plowed through Tiger King. I saw Tiger. Taken a swing at making our own sourdough bread. That didn't go great. Then we did whatever this was. With those entertainment options exhausted, I suppose it was inevitable that we'd eventually hit the let's perform social experiments on our children for our own amusement stage of quarantine. And here we are. Enter the Patience Challenge, in which a bored parent puts a tempting snack in front of their kid and then tells them that they can have some, but they need to wait a minute while they step out of the room because you know how toddlers love to exercise patience. Some kids are really good at it, others, not so much. And in the spirit of quarantine trend solidarity, we had some of our Channel 3 employees put their own children to the test. You can have five of them if you wait for mommy to come right back. Don't eat them yet though, okay? I want you to wait till I come back from the bathroom, okay? So just wait, don't touch it until I come back. Regrettably, for my selfish purposes, it turns out that most of my coworkers' kids appear to be fairly well behaved, often registering more confusion than anything. Almost all of them behaved admirably, hung in there and received their reward. Good job, you can eat your chocolate now. With the exception of Jax. Our producer's son simply could not be constrained by what he clearly considered to be arbitrary and senseless rules decreed by his adult oppressors. Let's go on his own end. Jax not only violated the snack order, but after clearly noticing that he was being surveilled, he took it to the next level by effectively disabling the camera so that he could continue his crime spree undeterred. You're the man, Jax. Fight the power. Now, I have no children of my own to speak of as I have not yet been blessed, but I felt it was unfair to ask my coworkers to submit themselves to such judgment without doing so myself. So I did what I could, given my circumstance. Okay, remember, don't eat my turkey while I'm gone. Bye, I trust you. Smoke machine! That's what you get! That is what you get! You get smoke machined! You need to learn patience and self-control. When it really comes down to it, this challenge is really less an assessment of the children and more of the parents, an admittedly imperfect but still potentially telling window into if we're raising our children properly or if, perhaps, we could still use a little work. This is Mike Polk doing the best I can as a single working father for three news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I absolutely loved uh, how he ran the cat off with the smoke machine. I, I wouldn't advise doing that with young kids, though. <laughs> Uh, Matt, have you tried that with um, with Emmy and River? Yeah, I, I tried it with them. Uh, hi, e hi. Uh, Emmy took the bowl away from River and was watching him, and River didn't care at all. And she kept. Remember when I gave you the chocolate yesterday? Yeah. Remember you were keeping River from eating it? Yeah. You did. Was that tough not to eat it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it was tougher for her than River, but uh, I don't know. Jay, would you have that kind of restraint? I mean, that's that was pretty tough. No way. When I was a kid, I would have eaten every piece of candy was the second they left the room. No doubt about it. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. <laughs> Hi.
<laughs> Same here. I, I think it's equally as tough with parents and Halloween candy where the kids get it as well. It's like, oh, I, I remember having more pieces yesterday. But uh, anyway, well done, Mike Polk, as always. So, all right, let's jump into the forecast. Uh, we've got a lakeshore flood warning tonight out for areas of the western basin of Lake Erie. This continues to be an issue with an east or northeast wind. All that water on the lake piles up on the western side. So we've had all sorts of beach erosion, inland flooding. Uh, we saw some of those pictures earlier. Are certainly a uh, messy scene as you get out uh, towards the western basin of Lake Erie. Good news is that wind will start to relax here as we go over the next couple days. You can see we're still dealing with an aerial flood warning down near Mansfield. That's for rain that has fallen, and we still have some rivers that are high across uh, much of northern Ohio. So the rain, where is it now? Well, we've been in and out of it throughout the daytime, but very dry air working into the system. That's why we were able to clear out out towards the east. Still dealing with showers, though, as you get down towards areas of Huron County in and out of the rain in the Willard community that stretches back towards Ashland, Mansfield. Just a light to moderate rain. It's not really going to cause much in terms of additional flooding, but it's really preventing us from drying out at all and any of the flood waters receding. That stretches all the way back towards Dover, New Philly. But the bigger picture, here's this swirling area of low pressure. It's cut off from the main jet stream, so it's kind of wobbling itself down to the south. Temperatures where we've had the clouds are much cooler. We're in the 60s. Meanwhile, a beautiful afternoon from Ashland Ashtabula down towards Trumbull County, even Cuyahoga County, we've been in the 70s. But look at the dry air. When you get dew points in the 40s, that is like rub your feet on the carpet and zap yourself type air. There's virtually no moisture in it. And that dry air is coming into the area from the east. You can see it shoved all the humidity that we have as indicated by the greens off towards the west. So we've got a dry set of days here in terms of humidity. If you go out for a run or a walk, you're not even gonna sweat at all because that air is so dry. In terms of pollen, the tree and grass pollen, both in the high category, if you're sniffling and sneezing, it doesn't look like a good week for you as that continues to be uh, in the high to very high category. Category. But the good news is we're going to get some sunshine mixed with those clouds as we go throughout your Wednesday to help kind of relieve and counteract some of those allergy issues. Your National Design Mart Hour by our forecast takes those clearing skies all the way down towards the south and west. I think all of us see some sunshine mixed with clouds tomorrow. A beautiful day. We'll have a cool east breeze. Temperatures staying in the 60s as we head on into your Thursday. However, that shower chance returns from the south as that area low pressure comes back into the area. Put it all together with Universal Windows Direct 7-day forecast. Cooler the next two days. We do have scattered shower chances Thursday, Friday. Saturday at this point looks great. And then we have afternoon kind of summertime thunderstorm chances beginning Sunday. And look at those temperatures, Jay, up into the 80s by next week. I'm ready. I am absolutely ready. Matt, thank you very much. Again, congratulations <laughs> on your expanding family. Terrific news. Still ahead, school is finishing up for kids, but it's important to keep their brains active all summer. We have some book recommendations for your young kids and our Worth the Watch is super cool today. Why 1,000 dolphins gathered together. This is a very rare thing and we'll tell you what they're doing when we come back.
It's time for our daily senior shout out and tonight we're giving a shout out to Bryce Jones, a senior at Brush High School. Bryce will be attending the University of Akron in the fall. Remember, you can send us your senior shout outs on WKYC.com slash senior shout outs. Summer reading programs are more important than ever since students weren't able to finish the school year in school. The Cleveland Public Library has a few recommendations for your kids and teenagers to keep their brains and imaginations strong. My kids pick is Island Born by Juno Diaz and it's a really cute story about a girl and in class everyone is talking about where their families came from and she's not really too sure. She doesn't remember um, since she came to this country when she was a baby so she goes home and talks to her family and gets stories about where she came from and her heritage. Now we do want to say that while the library is still closed for now, you can find most of these books on their eBooks website. And the Cuyahoga County Public Library is hoping to allow people to pick up books from some of its branches starting in June. And if your teenager likes ghost stories, that's the recommendation for this summer. My teen pick is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. And this is a story about a girl who can see ghosts and it's a little spooky. And she, her best friend is a ghost named Jacob. And she travels to Scotland and communicates with ghosts and not quite sure what she's supposed to do. And it's a really, really interesting read. Oh, fascinating. If you want your kids to get in on the summer reading program, the library still plans to hold the Lit League online with online story time and activities too. Registration is already open. You can find a link for that and the books again on our website, wkyc.com. Today's Worth the Watch is simply breathtaking. What attracted so many dolphins to one location? Testing one, two, three, four, five, six. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. I'm Russ Mitchell and I'm Laura Queso. We begin tonight with some new directives from. It's time for our Worth the Watch. This is just mesmerizing. I love this video. A dolphin superpod was caught on camera near Laguna Beach this week. It's believed that there are more than 1,000 of them that can be seen fishing in the same area. Romney, these are very rare. They usually happen in very deep ocean water, but every once in a while, if there's an abundance of food in one area, they will all congregate and look at them go.
more than a thousand. Incredible. I feel like this could be our daily moment of zen just to let the audio play. <laughs> I like it. Very relaxing. That's going to do it. We're out of time. We're back tomorrow at 5 with another edition of What's New. We hope you join us then. Absolutely. What Matters Most with Russ and Laura starts right now. We today call upon your sense of personal responsibility and accountability to others. Ohioans protecting Ohioans. The governor is switching from a state order to an urgent health advisory. From social activities to travel, what all of this means for you. I speak for a lot of people in Cleveland uh, and all throughout our state when I say, Godspeed, Annie Glenn. Advocate and wife of a pioneer. We remember the life and contributions of Annie Glenn. The widow of astronaut and Senator John Glenn died today from the coronavirus. Health versus fear. Hospitals seeing sicker patients because people are waiting too 